It's got to be the nicest 757 on the planet. The plane is very much an extension of the Trump brand. Donald Trump's Boeing 757 is one of the largest, most luxurious private jets in the world. So how do you tell one of America's richest men that his pride and joy is in pieces? And that you may have lost one of the jet's most vital parts. Different guy. I know Mr. Trump, but I know that he will only settle for his own calling on the airplane, and I don't blame him. And Trump has made a special request that will force his pilot to make a very tricky maneuver. Palm Beach, Florida. It's the place to be for America's rich and famous. It's also home to one of the largest and most luxurious private jets in the world. This Boeing 757 is a sleek, narrow-bodied, long-legged beauty. And she's treated like the celebrity who owns her. Visitors at this private airfield can't resist gawking and taking photos. They must keep their distance. Because like the billionaire tycoon who bought her, she commands respect. This is Donald Trump's private jet. A Boeing 757 that's a giant in its class. And this is the man who Donald Trump trusts with his life. He's John Duncan, and he's been Trump's personal pilot on and off since 1989. The biggest part of my job is to make sure that everything happens seamlessly behind the scenes for Mr. Trump. So we might be scrambling, but when Mr. Trump shows up, he just step on the airplane and be off to his destination. We should be departing on runway 7. A lifelong pilot, John took on the ultimate challenge when Trump acquired one of the best private jets money can buy, the Boeing 757. Everything that they did on it is very, very uh, spectacular. They've got large, high-thrust Rolls-Royce engines on it. Uh, it's, got a, uh, it's got a very nice look to it. Uh, it's extremely fast for an airliner. It's a very, very fast airplane for a large airplane. Uh, it's extremely comfortable. It takes turbulence very, very well. It's kind of like the Ferrari in the airline category airplane. Built to hold 228 passengers, this 757 is three times the size of the average private jet. 47 meters long, with a wingspan of 39 meters. The tail stands 14 meters high. She's one of the biggest privately owned corporate jets flying. Well, the 757, in my opinion, is probably one of the you know, most remarkable airplanes that Boeing ever built. Inside, the $100 million plane has enough gold that if melted down, could gold plate the outside of a Greyhound bus. Seat belts, light sockets, decorative trim. The ceiling panels are ultra suede. The seats are high-grade leather. The cabinets are rare mahogany. The plane has a screening room that's the same size as a large home theater and equipped with a 57-inch TV. This 757 even has two bedrooms and a shower. Any man who flies for Donald Trump is no ordinary pilot. John Duncan has aviation in his blood. My father was a military pilot, and he actually started teaching me to fly when I was 15 years old. Uh, as a matter of fact, I started flying an airplane before I could drive a car. It's just something that always fascinated me. It's something that I just grew to love. Once I had a chance to go uh, solo, I was really hooked, and I decided that's what I wanted to do. After years as Trump's private pilot, John has learned his role. Every flight must be planned to perfection. And that's hard, because his boss has a very busy and unpredictable schedule. Yeah, obviously, anytime there's any kind of a short notice change, we have to deal with it as quickly and efficiently as possible so we don't inconvenience Mr. Trump or his schedule, because we know how important that is. Trump's signature line, you're fired, is an unlikely possibility for the expert pilot. But Duncan is not taking any chances. Well, I'm sure that if I damaged his airplane, you know, uh, I probably, that probably would not be a good thing. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, Mr. Trump's a, you know, he's a very fair man, but I'm sure there's something I could do that would upset him. Now John is taking Trump from Palm Beach to New York, Trump's two homes. They can make a slot reservation for an arrival at LaGuardia, 1700Z on the 26th, please. But this is not an ordinary flight, because after this one, the plane's going in for a routine safety inspection. Every 18 months, we do a major inspection on the airplane. Uh, it's an FAA requirement. It's part of our approved maintenance program. And what that basically does is that we inspect the entire airplane 
uh, very, very carefully to make sure that everything is in perfect working order. Um, it's a very common occurrence. It's something that happens on all jets, just at different intervals. And uh, it takes uh, quite a substantial amount of work and time to do. But John is in a race against time. In three weeks, Trump needs to go to London to make a keynote address, and he wants a 757 to take him there. That's enough time for the safety check, but really tight for a series of cosmetic changes and upgrades that Trump wants done while the plane is in the shop. But John has no choice but to say yes. Alrighty. Mid-afternoon, John Duncan and co-pilot Larry Bryan ready the 757 for takeoff. First step, a visual inspection on the tarmac. Then, the flight checklist. After clearing security, the billionaire tycoon boards the plane. First thing I do when I get on this aircraft is look around for details. I always study the details. Cleanliness, I go up to the pilot, see how everything's going. I like to look at the cockpit. I want everything to be absolutely perfect. So, John, everything's good? Everything's perfect, Mr. Drunk. All right, good, good. Let's, Let's have, have a go. good flight. All righty. Thank you. Even for this regular Florida New York flight, John is a man of precision that suits his boss to a T. Take off speeds. V1's 121, VR is 128, and V2 is 134. Duncan and Donald Trump have an understanding based on years of trust and respect. You need somebody with great integrity, has tremendous amounts of money at stake in terms of the maintenance, in terms of taking care of the plane, in terms of the quality of the plane itself. So John Duncan really epitomizes to me what that's all about. All right, we're ready to taxi. Oh, that's what Mr. Trump has hired me for, is not only to fly the airplane, but also to make sure that all of that planning is done correctly and to make sure that everything is in place before we depart. You're on the ride, John. The plane not only feels like a Rolls Royce on the inside, it's got two Rolls-Royce engines powering it, which was something Trump desperately wanted. The engines are the safest in the industry and the quietest in their class, meaning Trump can land the airplane even in noise-restricted airports. One of the things very important to me on the Boeing 757 was the Rolls-Royce engines. They're special, they're really popular, the most popular, and frankly, I was happy to be able to get the one with the Rolls-Royce engines. We really wanted that. Well, folks, your captain speaking. We're next to the runway. We'll be departing here momentarily. Please be seated for departure. With 40,000 pounds of thrust on each engine, the Rolls-Royces can propel this jet to 41,000 feet in just 20 minutes. John takes the 757 northward from Palm Beach to New York. Gia Parolo is Donald Trump's personal flight attendant. She's been working for Mr. Trump since 2005. This is a very short flight, so I'm just preparing some refreshments. We should be landing anytime soon. In a plane that once held 228 passengers, there's lots of room for just one. With the 18 executive class seats, the two bedrooms, the media room, and a gourmet kitchen, Donald Trump is on top of the world. In two hours, they reach New York. Flaps, flaps I see 30 degrees. 30 degrees, landing checklist complete, clear to land. returns to the pinnacle of his empire, Trump Tower. Now he gets to work with the business of making money, while John Duncan gets the 757 back in the air. It took only 45 minutes to refuel and turn around to get him to his next destination, Brunswick, Georgia, where the plane will be serviced and to the standards which Donald Trump demands. Even with two shifts working around the clock, it's going to be a tight turnaround to guarantee a timely departure. This Boeing 757 is no passenger plane. This is Donald Trump's private corporate jet. 
and it's come in for a safety check in Brunswick, Georgia, at a heavy maintenance facility called Stambaugh Aviation. How's done with the fuel tanks, right? Because we have about 100 employees, we can take on some, some very large projects. The inspection is routine. The upgrades Trump has ordered are not. And Scott does not want to disappoint a client like Trump. Well, we're doing a heavy structural inspection. We're doing interior upgrades. We're installing a Wi-Fi system. We're doing paint upgrades. We're doing a fuel tank modification. He has just three weeks remaining to get it out the door in time for Trump's trip to the UK. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. The pressure is on to keep the standards top notch while completing the maintenance inspection. Donald Trump doesn't have a $100 million aircraft so he can charter. He wants his airplane and he wants it right. The plane has been at standby for a week. Trump's personal pilot, John Duncan, arrives from Palm Beach to monitor the progress. Anytime the airplane goes through any kind of a major inspection like that, I always like to, to be present. I like to make sure that uh, things are going well, that they don't have any kind of questions. And what John finds is that Trump's exquisite airplane is in pieces. The interior has been completely dismantled to install the new Wi-Fi system. Yeah, I definitely get a level of anxiety only because of the fact that I'm so cautious. I don't want anything to happen to it. The only thing I was going to watch for, Mike, was um, if we see any kind of scuffs that took place. Trump's corporate carpenter, Mike Cotto, is accustomed to handling the details. We'll start at the back, work ourselves forward once we start closing everything up. Make it We're kind of the closers in the ball game. You know, at the end, they, they, they bring the, uh, the guy in to close the game out. That's what we do. Donald Trump wants the floor mat in his galley replaced because a seam in the middle of it has been offending his sense of flawlessness. So I understand we're going to be able to solve that by relocating the seam around the corner. Is that correct? That is correct. We get extremely detailed when it comes to this. We want to make this absolutely perfect because Mr. Trump demands perfection. The small details on the inside are keeping John busy, but he's now got a big problem on the outside. The engine nose cowls, which have been sent out to a subcontracting company for repair, haven't arrived. The nose cowl is the circular covering at the front of the engine. It directs air into the turbine and protects it from damage. The plane's not going anywhere without the nose cowls. Trump's nose cowls were sent out to be restored after hundreds of hours of flight. Did you hear about the nose cowls? I have not. The last thing I heard on it, it was supposed to be this week, but they haven't showed up yet. I haven't heard any updates on it. The timing could not be worse. Good afternoon, this is John. Hi, John. Hi, Rona. How are you doing? Very good. And you? Great, thank good, you. Good. John, I want to Mr. Trump's you VP know. and chief assistant, Rona Graff, calls John to find out exactly when the jet will be ready to fly to LaGuardia so for, for Trump's sure trip to the UK. To London. I've been working for Mr. Trump for over two decades, and I guess I'm what many people call his proverbial right arm. What, what is the exact date that all of that is happening? What date will you bring it up to New York? So as of right now, the 26th is the date that we plan on flying it to LaGuardia. Perfect. Very good. Okay, Rona. He returns to Palm Beach, Florida, to begin planning the flight to the UK. He calls the fixed-based operator at Stansted Airport in London. Good morning, it's John Duncan calling with the Trump Organization Flight Department. How are you guys doing today? Private aircraft on the scale of Trump's 757 have special needs and do not get the same support as commercial ones. John has to go through every detail himself. We appreciate the help. Please feel free to call me if you have any questions or issues. Do they have a lab cart that can service our laboratories? Do they have belt loaders that can reach our baggage compartments should we need them? Do they have a stair truck that's high enough to meet the requirements of our stair and our door heights? But just as John perfects his flight plan... Trump Organization? Yes, one moment, please. Donald Trump throws in an unexpected twist to the travel plans. You want to come on in? Okay. Hi, Mr. Trump. So, how are we doing? Good. We're in good shape. Tell me. So I have you leaving out of LaGuardia at about 9.30 at night, and then you should be arriving in Aberdeen, Scotland around 6, 7 in the morning. The rest Trump the has decided to change plans. Before London, he will go to Aberdeen, Scotland to step up his promotional campaign for his newest golf course. I've been taking you right to the venue. Okay, good. So I'll be stopping there for two days, then I'm going on to London where I'm making a speech in front of a packed house, and that'll be on Sunday, and then we head right back to New York. So we're going to have an exciting few days. The mission is now defined. The 757 will depart Brunswick for New York's LaGuardia Airport, where it will pick up Mr. Trump. 
It will then head for Aberdeen, Scotland for a two-day stopover before reaching its final destination, London Stansted Airport. Pilot John Duncan takes the changes in stride, but he knows Aberdeen, and it requires special attention. It's one of the shorter strips that we operate in and out of. And so consequently, we want to make sure that our takeoff and landing weights are, are appropriate and exact for the safe operation in and out of that runway. John adjusts his flight plans. The 757's modifications are almost done, so he heads back to Brunswick. The long-awaited nose cowls finally arrive. They look fantastic. Did a beautiful job. Mesh looks nice and clean. Looks like brand new. A little added bonus. Don't they? they did a nice On job. first glance, everything looks perfect. SBRR 4352. This one is a different cow. But suddenly, relief turns to concern. 4352. Yeah. The serial numbers don't match Trump's. That's the one. A different cow. I need the two serial numbers we sent and the two we got. Okay. All right, let's open this one up. John anticipates that this will be trouble. I know what's going to happen. We're going to have to get it. We're going to have to get ours. Scott, Mr. Trump, absolutely, he's animate about that. I need that. I need he wants that. his parts on his airplane. When you own important aircraft, especially one like a Boeing 757, you ideally want to keep all of those parts together, especially a plane like I have where there's so few hours on the plane. It's like a new plane, and you want to keep everything together. You don't want lots of switches and changes. I mean, let me tell them that. The question John and Scott need to figure out is, if the nose cowls that were delivered today aren't Trump's, where exactly are they? Hey, Rick, this is Scott. So we think we don't have the correct nose cow here. It is overhauled, but we know the Trumps want to put the exact same ones back on there because of their low time. Okay, my concern is that the nose cow that belongs to us has actually been overhauled and is sitting there in the shop. And that is simply we send this back and have them send ours. That's the best scenario, that we can swap them out. Worst case is that's on a you know, an American Airlines airplane or somebody else's airplane flying at 40,000 feet right now. Exactly. <laughs> that would not be good. No. I know Mr. Trump, but I know that he will only settle for his own calling on the airplane, and I don't blame him. R R four three five two. If the calling's on another airplane and it's not readily available to ship back to us, that could definitely affect our schedule. It could definitely put us behind schedule. We're really hoping that that's not going to be the case. Donald Trump's exquisite private plane, a Boeing 757, is in the final stages of a routine inspection in Brunswick, Georgia. The plane's chief pilot, John Duncan, is here to keep watch over the process, and he's got a big problem. One of two engine nose cowls that have been sent out for servicing appears to have been replaced by another one. Might be somebody else's cow, so... <laughs> The exchange is something the exacting Donald Trump will never allow. So our hope is that it's still sitting on the shop floor Completed, down south. Ready Completed, to go, Or if they have boxed it up, you know, then we can basically do the exchange and it won't cause any delay. Right, good, so. good. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and hang the other one. Right. Hanging the other one is no mean feat. Well, I'm going to get a guy to sit up there and do the cowboy thing on top of the pylon. Okay. Yeah, watch it coming up. Well, at least we're getting one on. One out of two is a good start. Back up. Back it up. Scott finally gets the call he's been waiting for. Scott speaking. Hey, Rick, what's going on, man? He's about to find out whether or not the engine cowl mix-up will cost Mr. Trump his upcoming trip to the okay. UK. Okay. I'll, I'll check the email then and look at the pictures. Thanks. Bye-bye. Rick's saying that couldn't have been a mix-up because these are the only two 757 nose cows that they had in the shop at this time. Oh, good. So there's no way possible for it to mix up if it is a Trump cow. I'm breathing a big sigh of relief. It looks right now like it was a paperwork issue as far as the nose cow serial number was concerned rather than the actual cow itself. So that makes me feel a lot better. We get back on track, get that second cow hung. With the exterior pieces falling in place, John now turns his attention to reassembling the 757's dismantled interior. Have you got any more white gloves? I do. Right Great. here. Great. I need them. 
The reassembly is a delicate procedure, and the pressure's on to get it done before takeoff tomorrow. No smudges on the wood, no scratches, no nicks. This Air is what you call hands-on. You gotta be very cautious. Just even when it gets hot and you kind of get sweaty, just moving through the aircraft sometimes, if you don't watch your head, you drag it on those sidewall panels, it'll smudge it up, make it nasty. Or even a drip of sweat, a drip of sweat, sweat could fall absolutely. down on something, a piece of leather or fabric. Well, you guys there watch your feet on those, man. I'll tell you, I'm gonna turn that up. Everybody get crucified. So make sure this all lines up. This is real quick, critical where this seam is right here, that everything comes together and it's nice and straight. You don't want nothing to get damaged. It's high-end quality furniture, and it's for Donald Trump, so you don't want nothing. You want it perfect when it leaves out of here. No wires, no plug-ins, and you got your trucks too. So panel by panel, the interior is reassembled. Oh, it's got a whiskey piece back there. The protective plastic sheets are removed, revealing a lot of dirt and dust. What do you think, Daryl? Oh, I think we're ready to proceed. All righty. John works with Daryl Thomas, ground operations supervisor, to scrub the plane to perfection. I'm ready for the spots. The brand spanking new toothbrush and a new can of air. All right. And I want to make sure that the grain is all in the correct direction and that it's perfectly clean from dust and grime and dirt. Mr. Trump has got an incredible vision. He's got an eagle eye. So even a slightest, smallest little dot he will notice. I want the plane to be immaculate. I don't want dust. I want everything polished. I want it to be in absolute showroom or mint condition. And the word mint condition is a term my father used to use. If he looked at an apartment, he'd say, this is mint condition. Well, that's what I want the plane, showroom or mint condition. I would say that I am definitely a neat freak. I'd say we're both uh, very, neatness is very important to us, no question. Looking good, D-Man. Thank you. The T-Bird's starting to look like herself again. That's what we need. As the hours count down, the crew races to get the paint job done. We gotta get his plane looking real nice for Mr. Trump. If he sees this and he, he likes the job that we're doing, maybe I can go work for him. <laughs> Other than painting planes, maybe he'll let me paint his house. Looks good. I'm sure Mr. Trump will be very happy. The aircraft is now complete. But before the 757 can fly, she must submit to the weigh scales. The retrofit could have thrown off the plane's center of gravity. They must confirm that's not the case. The way that we do it, quite simply, is we put three jacks at three different points underneath the airplane. One goes underneath each wing, and there's one that goes at the nose section. It's a little unsettling at times to think that a 140,000-pound airplane is being picked up by a spot about the size of a 50-cent piece, but I have every confidence they know what they're doing. Okay, you got a total of 144, 110. Go ahead, unlock it. Be ready to come down. All right, let's start bringing it down. With the airplane safely on the ground, it's one hour to the scheduled takeoff. The push is on to get the plane out the door to pick up Mr. Trump this evening. Hey, Daniel, we can push it out anytime you guys are ready. And it's always punch time when you get to the last minute like this. Uh, right now, I've got some uh, touch-ups going on on the leading edge of the wings. I'm trying to get the airplane pushed out of the hangar and get some fuel on it. You need the steps moved? Yeah, I'll get them. Okay. Yeah, you say, well, I need to get up there, though. Uh, you want to ride brakes? Yeah, I'll do the brakes, yeah. Okay. And so there's a lot going on. It's, uh, you know, it's very typical. It's always a last-minute last rush, but we'll make it happen. Of all the foreseeable events that could legitimately ruin John's departure plans, it all comes down to an unfinished floor mat. So when is the plane ready? The only we're waiting on right now is Mike Cotto. I'll double-check on him, but as soon as he gets off the airplane, we're ready to go. Okay, I told him that we'd be ready to leave here in, a, in a, like minutes, but that's not going to be the case. I don't know, Coder needed that much time. Two hours. Yeah, he said he needs two more hours. Okay. Never fails. Mike. Yes, sir. Did I hear the rumor correctly that it's two more hours? That is a correct rumor. 
John has to get the 757 to New York with enough time to turn it around before LaGuardia closes for runway maintenance at midnight. And that's not looking likely. All right, I got a couple calls to make. Yeah. The question now is, how is he going to break the news to Donald Trump? Yeah, I'm trying to think who I have to call. Donald Trump's Boeing 757 is supposed to be on its way to pick up the billionaire, but the installation of the new floor mat in the aft galley is causing a major setback. So when is the plane ready? All right, the old saying goes, you can either get it right or you can get it now. You just can't get it right now. Quality is more important than speed, so let's make it perfect. Absolutely. So? But the clock is ticking. How many people will be at the speech in London? They expect over 20,000 people. It's going to be a huge crowd. Wow. After a two and a half hour holdup, the job is complete. We're done. It's a wrap. You know, they use you, they get what you want, and they throw you off. But they always call us back. That's the biggest thing. Got fuel on the airplane. We're going to do a quick security check right now, and we'll be out of here on our way to New York. Finally in the air, John and his co-pilot Larry Bryan feel confident they'll reach Mr. Trump on time after all. The airplane looks spectacular, did a beautiful job on it. It looks good, it's maintained all the way to the, uh, to, to the nth degree, it looks spectacular. It's good to be back. Man, I felt like I was starving. Honestly, I felt like I was missing something nutritionally from not flying. They're heading for LaGuardia, one of the most hectic airports in America where runway maintenance has created an airport shutdown at midnight. But John plans on having Mr. Trump in the air by 9 p.m. Got the accelerator down here, and uh, we'll be at LaGuardia as quick as we can. While John flies to LaGuardia, the Trump Tower restaurant is preparing the meal for this evening's flight. Nothing better than roast turkey, right? It's Thanksgiving every day here. Executive chef Chris Devine sets a high standard for airline food. Sugar snap peas. Chef is cooking for just four passengers tonight. But even for this late night snack, he goes all out. A lobster salad, a Gulf shrimp cocktail, a roast turkey breast, roast sirloin of beef, and our house-made corned beef. Delicious. Uh, we also have homemade cookies and some mixed green salad. I guess you should have the salad before the cookies. Chris, yeah, the food's ready for the plane. The chef calls Mr. Trump's bodyguard to make pickup arrangements. The meals are wrapped in clear plastic so airport security can inspect it. It's picked up from Trump Tower and delivered to the T-Bird, Trump 757. As John approaches LaGuardia, a notoriously busy airport, the weather is beginning to sock in. Winds are 208, 10 miles of biz, 6,000 broken. Public and private jets can spend time circling the airport in a holding pattern, waiting for an opportunity to land. There's no fast track, even for billionaires. It's first come, first serve. Despite the fog, John finally gets the all clear to land. Up. Feels great to be back in New York. We take off from any place. The airplane just wants to head for New York. I like New York. Me too. As the pilot of a private corporate jet, John Duncan must report to a smaller private terminal. He has none of the support of the commercial airliners. We have to do our own fueling. We have to do our own catering. We have to do our own lavatory service. So we have to do our own handling and our planning and things like that. Security measures for private planes are also handled differently from commercial airlines, especially when the owner is as high profile as Donald Trump. Let's go each wheel, lean over each one, look at each brake assembly, and then kind of go up the strut there. Eric Moyleman and his company, Premier Corporate Security, Inc., have been working for Donald Trump since 2009. This is truly an airliner. Uh, but it is not at an airline gate where there is unlimited, you know, support staff from the airline. We're providing it all on the private side of things. Uh, we're just, we're here at the direction of Mr. Right. Trump to uh, secure his airplane and make sure that he meets all the applicable standards. Under TSA rules, they have to sweep for all the restricted items required on a commercial jet, such as weapons, explosives, or sharp objects. 
That's secure. Mm -hmm. Looking for anything that might be out of place, uh, anything that should not be here. Exterior is clear. All right, we've established the sterile area. The airplane is locked down. You'll have the north wing tip. You'll have the south wing tip. Colleen will maintain the access point, and I'll rove in between. Captain Duncan expects wheels up by 9 p.m., a good three hours before the airport closes for maintenance. But by now, he should know that his boss doesn't always play by the rules. Well, I tell you, you mean at the airport uh, at 1130? Is that what, yeah, it'll, well, we'll make it work. Uh, you know, we'll make it work. Mr. Trump is watching the presidential debate at the office on TV and refuses to budge until it's over, jeopardizing the takeoff before midnight. Well, it's, it's kind of up to them. I mean, it's, um, uh, it's just totally up to the Port Authority. Unfortunately, I don't control it. And he doesn't control the weather either. Changement, please. Changement. Robert McAdams is the general manager of Shelter, the private Please terminal where Trump's 757 parks when at LaGuardia. The weather today has not been conducive for air travel. You had fog, you had shifting winds, the airport changed runway configurations a few times, so all this adds to delayed flights. The runway is jammed with backlogged planes, and the ones that aren't in the air by midnight are grounded. Trump needs to be in the air before airport shutdown, and it's up to John to make that happen. You stay in the car, and then and then uh, I'll bring the boss, Don Jr., back to the car, and then you guys go to the staging area and come out to the ramp. They have just half an hour to get Mr. Trump through the private security gate, into the plane, and up in the air. We'll have uh, an engine almost uh, running, so the second he steps foot on the uh, airplane, we're ready to start those engines and taxi out. The other option is just not happening. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to talk about it. We're going to go. Done. Okay. All right. Done deal. Sounds good. Let's go make this happen. All right. And also, please have staff stand by the belt loader in case of any last-minute luggage from the motorcade. Copy? Uh, it has to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Otherwise, Mr. Trump will be very, very upset if he's not in the air tonight before midnight. I'm running out of room. After struggling to get to New York, it now looks to John like the Trump 757 might spend the night on the airfield. It's 11.40 p.m. at LaGuardia Airport, 20 minutes to airport shutdown, and Mr. Trump is nowhere in sight. If he doesn't arrive in the next 10 minutes, there's a good chance he won't be going to Scotland tonight. But no one is giving up just yet. One, once Mr. Trump gets here, we have to make sure the chocks are pulled immediately. There is a time restraint. Mr. Trump missing his curfew tonight will throw off his entire trip. Just then, flight attendant Gia Parolo gets the first good news of the night. I just heard wind that uh, Mr. Trump is going through security as we speak, so they'll be en route to the airplane, and we're really excited. Just in the nick of time. Good evening, Mr. Trump. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> Donald Trump Jr., an executive vice president of the Trump Organization, is flying with his father tonight. As is George Soriao, a company top executive. Start the right. At this point, it's a race against the clock. He said seven minutes, and that was like five or six minutes ago, so I think we're going right after this guy. With just five minutes to spare, they're given clearance for takeoff. B1, rotate. Uh, great, you're up. Here comes. Great to be on board. We're going to have a nice trip. We're flying over the Atlantic. We land in Scotland in about five hours, and then we go on to London. It's going to be a nice trip. With all as it should be, he can now settle in for some late-night business with Don Jr. Can you say sign your contract? Mr. Trump obviously has a very hectic schedule, so even being able to save a few hours uh, to travel in a plane where people can sit down and work, where people can get some rest. So it really is an extension of the office. Shortly after takeoff, Mr. Trump decides he's had enough for one night. Okay, good night, everybody. The 757 is cruising at an altitude of 41,000 feet over the North Atlantic. 
Taking into account the curvature of the Earth, the aircraft follows the great circle route that John has carefully mapped out. After six hours in the air, Commander Duncan is coming in for a landing in Aberdeen, Scotland. Uh, 757 Alpha Fox would like to start our descent. The runway is just under 2,000 meters long, which is short for a plane this big. So the runway is uh, not short, short, but it's uh, you know it's it's uh, not a whole lot of margin there for uh, you know for excessive floating. So we we have to get it right down on the runway and get it stopped. There's an old saying in aviation that says you can't make a good landing out of a bad approach. And so that's very true, uh, very much so in Aberdeen. Gear down, please. Fox to 20. Well out from the touchdown zone of the runway, like five miles, for example, I want to have the airplane at the correct speed. I want to have my flaps and my landing gear in the correct configuration. I want to make sure that everything is stabilized as far as the approach is concerned, so I can make a very smooth, gradual descent to the runway. Metamoms. 40. 30. 20. The landing is textbook perfect. Thank you. Probably the most fun in any airplane is the takeoff and landing. That's the time when a pilot gets to really utilize their skills to get to really shine and do what they do best. First on Trump's agenda, a trip to his new golf course. This gives the captain and crew a much-needed break. Well, it's been a long night. I'm a little tired. I'm ready to go to the hotel and get some sleep. But Mr. Trump has asked John to do a low flyby over the golf course, and John has until takeoff time tomorrow to plan it. There's only one thing that rivals Mr. Trump's love of business. Of course, everything good? I really enjoy it. It's his love of golf. That one I really like. Most guys can't even think about it from back here. Trump International Golf Links is a 240 hectare course that opened in 2012. And he loves to promote it. No matter where you go anywhere in the world, this is the single greatest piece of land for golf. It was made, it came from heaven. The following day, and after a good night's sleep, John's takeoff to London is looming. Mr. Trump's request for a low-level flyby over his golf course will take some fancy flying techniques. Uh, we'll make a left turn and fly by the golf course and then uh, make another left turn over the top of the golf course so he'll have a real nice perspective out of the left side of the airplane. Mr. Trump's as proud of his golf course as he is of his 757, and he's arranged a photo op to show off both. People are waiting to see this plane fly over Trump International. The lower the better for a good view, but John has to follow the directions of Aberdeen Air Traffic Control. 2,000 you know, will work, but if we can get to 1,500 or even 1,000, particularly over the water, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll plan on doing that. Okay. Because of the fact that we are in Aberdeen's airspace, uh, we have to clear that with Aberdeen and control uh, to make sure that it's acceptable to them. What, how high will you be going? Probably about 1,500 feet above the ground, maybe a little bit lower. Yeah. We can't go 500? Ask him if there's, uh, oh, if we can get lower. Any chance of uh, 2,000 uh, Not above 3,000 feet, so whichever level you prefer. All right, not above 3,000 feet. Not above. Oh. John is satisfied with the clarification from air traffic control. Well, we're going to go past... His flying instructions are, he can't go higher than 3,000 feet, but is free to go as low as deemed safe. That's perfect. All right, let's set two. Yep, and what we'll do is we'll descend when we get to the shoreline. I'll be perfect. Yeah. Good. Positive rate, you're up. Yeah. Heading select. Heading select. The 757's main purpose is to fly high and fast, not low and slow. To give him more lift while descending and slowing down, John extends the slats at the front of the wing while also lowering the flaps at the back. It's called dirtying up the wing. Oh, there it is. There's the golf course. Wow, spectacular. <laughs> you can really get some great, great views of the fairways. Beautiful property, beautiful. Yes, sir. 
This will be our last pass, sir, and then we'll be heading down to London. That's what we'd like to do. Okay. As John makes his figure eight over the golf course at an incredibly slow speed of 315 kilometers an hour, Aberdeen Air Traffic Control informs them that they're not the only plane flying in the area. And uh, the uh, 7 out for Foxtra. Yeah. Just, just to remember, we do have uh, two light aircraft to the northeast along the coast from uh, the Almedi area. All right, thank you. We'll be, uh, we'll be looking. So, and do uh, you have an altitude readout on it, sir? It's right here. That's it. Drop it as low as you can. It's like a thousand. A thousand? Okay. With one eye on the two light aircraft and the other one on the figure eight maneuver, John gives the photographers on the ground the show they've been waiting for. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a shot right there. Oh yeah. Hey, let's go to London. Yes, sir. Great job. All right, thanks. Yes, sir, that's gonna be an awesome shot. It's a well-earned triumph. John spent precious time calculating the configuration to make this low-level figure eight a success. Nice. That, we're almost on time. Good job, man. <laughs> I couldn't sleep all night worried about that one. <laughs> now it's a short hop to London, where John Duncan hopes to catch some well-deserved rest, if his boss Donald Trump will let him. tour from New York to Scotland to London, Donald Trump barely has time to read over his speech before arriving at Stansted Airport. 30, 20, 10. Right there. Speed brakes up. Mr. Trump's presentation will have him in London for just half a day. The ground crew repositions the plane for a quick turnaround back to LaGuardia. Under John's careful watch, the all-important fuel is the first service truck to arrive. For the return trip to New York, John will need to top up the plane's 43,000 liter tanks with Jet A1 fuel. The lavatories are also serviced, a necessity for the seven-hour flight. No hotel for the crew on this stop. They're relaxing in the FBO's lounge until Mr. Trump returns from his speaking engagement. And on this final leg of the trip, John is in for a last-minute surprise. Yeah, he's on his way right now. He said he'll be here about 45 minutes. He's just heard that Mr. Trump is arriving back at the jet an hour early. Well, that definitely gets us in LaGuardia on time. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. We're firing up, man. We got a nice surprise. Mr. Trump is finished, and he's on his way back. So we're firing this bad boy up about an hour early. Okay. Galley is ready. Uh, taxi 15 minutes before or after. Okay, so, okay, so we're scheduled right now for 8 o'clock departure. Is that our yes. work? Okay, good. Universal's refiling the flight plan for 8 p.m. It's, it's already, it's, it's already it's done. done. Good. Yeah, Perfect. Hi, right, John. Thanks so much. Appreciate yeah. it, gentlemen. Right. Thanks for the help. It's good yeah. seeing you guys. All righty. With his speech behind him, Mr. Trump is ready for home. That was amazing. The London crowd was great. I had a good time. It was an exhausting day, and Donald Trump retires to his bedroom. And it's now John's turn to get to work. It's a great airplane. It's probably one of the best 757s built. Probably one of the best corporate airplanes built. It's an absolute joy to fly. It's a spectacular airplane. Uh, I truly enjoy it. Uh, we'll be in New York in about six hours. And uh, we won't be there for long, though. The uh, T-Bird likes to fly. And there's a lot more that Mr. Trump has to do. So another day or two, we'll be back on the road again uh, for yet another mission. It's, a, it's just a real pleasure, and uh, it's a fun job. I really enjoy it, all aspects of it. For Trump, the 757 is not just an extension of his brand. Big business deals need a big plane. And the 757 is the only aircraft that fits the bill. 
I do many, many business meetings in that plane, and I'll oftentimes take 25 or 30 people. We'll all be together. We'll be able to do deals. We'll be able to get things done. And frankly, you couldn't do it on a commercial airline. It wouldn't really work. Now, I've taken it to an extreme with a 757, but it can be an absolutely vital tool for business. Clear down, please. Clear down. With her mission a smashing success, the Boeing 757 is almost home. 100. But knowing Mr. Trump, she won't rest here for long. 20. 